<laughs> okay, so good evening, boys and girls. Exams are over. <clears throat> if I may say so, damn school is over. Which seemed an impossibility just a few years back. That horrible math or physics or whoever your least favorite teacher is, you will never have to see again. <laughs> that PE coach who has all is out to get you is done and dusted. I know everybody's looking there. You want to party now, relax, hang out with the beautiful friends you've made in the last 13 years, 14 or some less. The last thing you really want to do is sit here and listen to someone give you advice on life lessons and what the future holds for you. And to top it, my qualification to be doing this is zilch, nada. Not at all, nothing. Really apart from the fact that Neeta and I are friends and thus I have some benefits. My reason to be here is the same as that of your elder brother or your sister being allowed to do things that you're not allowed to do at home. I'm like them, older, that's all. So if you think that I have had a successful career, as I was getting very embarrassed when David was recounting, because also it's been so many years since I've gotten an award now, yeah? This is like two. <laughs> Gotta work harder. <clears throat> so also if you think I've had a successful career, a great past performance and my experiences of it are no assurance that it'll work in the future for you or work for you at all. And anyway, none of what I say today you will remember as soon as you're out of here. <laughs> or maybe even earlier because you're still sleeping from the big party you guys had last night. What I say may make sense to your mom or dad who will remember it some years down the line and they will also remember it for all the inappropriate things that I'm going to say tonight. But you are here, and so am I, so I promise to keep this extremely crisp and sharp. 20 minutes, tops. <laughs> but be rest assured, I understand if some of you walk out in the middle of my speech for bladder control reasons. Feel free to do that. Feel free because that's what essentially my talk is about. Feeling free, the freedom to be yourself, to listen to your inner voice, and never let anyone tell you who you are or who you ought to be, including me. These are the only years of your life in which you will be allowed to make regret-free mistakes. As you do so, you will chance upon your dreams and hopefully make a happy life out of their fulfillment. When you get to be 50, as some of your parents are, none of the mothers, they all look 35. <laughs> they're all looking extremely hot. Some of your parents are, and like I am, you will know that the bulk of your regrets are from not having done what you wish to do. So don't hold it against your over-diligent father who's telling you to study extra even post the exams. Your annoying mother who's still depressed that your handwriting is bad. <laughs> you know, she doesn't understand if it was bad five years ago, chances are that your handwriting is not going to improve for the rest of your life ever. <laughs> Ma'am, get that clear. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but let me assure you, squiggles and ants and mosquitoes on paper won't kill your career. Any doctor here will tell you, indecipherable hieroglyphics may actually be a career booster. <laughs> Don't be angry that your parents tell you that friend of yours is not good company, he is spoiling you. And please don't hold it against them when they tell you, he's a movie star son, he'll become a hero, what about you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let me assure you, movie stars, sons and daughters also have to work. Basically, just don't grudge the old man and the old bag, ever. All us parents try to do is to make you happy with your choices by annoying you with ours that are actually your choices anyway. <laughs> but you just don't know it yet. Your hormone levels are too high for you to understand this confusing logic. All you want to be is yourselves. And you're quite sure you know what that is. And I'm here tonight on your side only to confirm your conviction as you set forth into the big bad world from the loving shelter of Mrs. Neetha Ambani and all these wonderful and beautiful and warm teachers and faculty who have nurtured you to embark on your own journey through life. I was talking about parents because I think tonight is about parents. So I'm going to tell you something about my, my, about, about my parents. My mother was top class. She was really cool. She loved me un unconditionally, was beautiful, like all mothers are, and believed I will be the most famous man in the world, and I could do no wrong. In Delhi, they say, Hamara bachana is like the apple of my eye. 
some Punjabi ladies make it bigger, like the pineapple of my eye. <laughs> so I, I, was, I was the pineapple of my mother's eye. And my father was a gentleman. He was very educated, masters in law, extremely intelligent, knew seven languages, had traveled the world, knew his politics, fought for the freedom of our country, India, and excelled at sports like hockey, swimming, and pool. When I was 10, my father gave me an old chess set. Chess is a reflection of life, they say, and as cliched as it sounds, it's probably true. The first thing it teaches you is that every move has a consequence, whether you perceive that it does or does not. Nothing you do, not a single moment, is empty of living. So think of things through, not always, but often enough, often enough, so your life does not feel as black and white and as uniform as the squares on a chessboard. Sometimes, in order to move forward, you might need to take a few steps back. And there's no loss in doing something that hurts in the short run, but proves worthwhile in time. Sometimes, the queen might seem sexier. They always do. But if she gets taken by your adversary straight after you save her, then you might be better off saving your castle or the bald bishop instead. So don't always choose that which seems more desirable if something tells you it's going to get you into a whole lot of trouble. What I mean is also about tonight, drive home while your wits are about you instead of staying and getting stoned senseless after the party here. You can't get anywhere in chess if you don't look out for the little ones around you. The small pawns. Life is like that too. If you forget the smallest of your people or become foolish enough to imagine that the little graces you are given are of no value, you end up nowhere. When you look around you, learn to notice all the tiny little things that make your existence privileged and special. Just the fact that you are here, in this very moment, at this fantastic school, in the company of such adoring parents, is the product of immense love, hard work, and sacrifice on the part of many people present here. Taking your blessings for granted is the most ungracious stupidity, both in chess and in life.